Right now on Up With Creme, it's our last Wednesday of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. This morning, we're turning the camera around for our last day of our special coverage. I am Korean American. I'm Indian. I am Japanese American. I am part Filipino, Hispanic, and Caucasian. I am half Chinese. I am Filipino, Chinese, Spanish, French, Hawaiian. I sat down with my fellow Asian American colleagues to have an open conversation about what it's like being an Asian American. And we've got a few clouds as we kick things off this morning, but sunshine is going to work its way out and dominate our day. Plus, the Washington Board of Health will be meeting tomorrow to talk about Amelia Clark after an investigation reports show she may have violated state law. Up with Krim begins now. Well, hey there, good morning and welcome to Up with Krim. Here's a look at last night's total lunar eclipse. Wow, That's and this beautiful. is over the inland northwest, of course. The moon was eclipsed for several minutes before turning into a blood red moon. So we want to know, send us pictures if you saw it early this morning. We know all of you are early risers if you're up with us here on our show. Text us 509-448-2000 and we'd love to see your photos. Jeremy, did you get to see it? No. Um, <laughs> you were cloudy. back and forth out in the parking lot. This guy was yeah. running, getting his steps in. Yeah, yeah. just sitting out. Like, Come on, clouds, move out, move <laughs> out, move out. And then I walk outside. Sun officially, or sun, moon officially set at 5.09 this morning. Okay. Wow. I run outside for our first weather outside right at 5 o'clock, and I'm looking around, and I'm going, wow, the clouds broke, Aww. and now the moon's gone. I was but, sad. Luckily, so many people got pictures yes. from other parts of yeah. the world. So this is me begging you to send <laughs> photos because I didn't get to see it and I get to live vicariously through you. Yeah, there absolutely. Go. You got a good one from Soap Lake, I think. Yeah, right? absolutely. Robert Metzger, amazing photo. Amazing Thank you photo. very much. John Morrison also sent one in. So a lot of these photos are starting to funnel in and I think people are, you know, getting home going, oh, I can do something with this. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. All right, let's get you out the door, though, because it is Wednesday and we're one day closer to the weekend. That we are. You can see in those higher elevations, some of those clouds still sticking around. This is Silver Mountain. Oh, wow. Hard pressed to find any snow there. I was kind of taking a closer look, trying to figure that out. But if you're wondering why the moon turned red, it's because it moved into the shadow of the Earth. And what winds up happening there is all those rays from the sun start kind of bending around and the red ones smack dab in the middle of it. So kind of cool. Darker on the bottom side, lighter on the top side. Always incredible to see something going on in the atmosphere, but let's look again. A little bit of snow there, a little bit of snow there as well, but you're hard pressed to find it. You're kind of socked in up and over the mountain pass this morning. We're sitting at 48 here in Spokane and across the inland northwest. It's temps around 50 in Coeur d'Alene, 45 in Sandpoint and 50s out in central Washington. If you're off to the north, you're just slightly cooler you're in the low 40s. That's really about where you're going to stick here for the next well, 30 minutes and then things will really start to warm up. We are going to see those clouds quickly move out and hour by hour breaking it down. Notice this afternoon we are in the low 70s here in Spokane under mostly sunny skies. It's going to be downright gorgeous later on today. We've got showers moving in tomorrow and then as we get into the weekend, we'll start our warming trend and by early next week. Look at that. Temperatures on the rise. We have a hot start to June. All you know what hot means coming up in your full forecast. All right, we're going to take a look at some breaking news off the top of the hour. Breaking news out of San Diego this morning, actually. Yeah, cars on a major interstate are backed up for miles due to a police standoff. So take a look. Here is a live look right now. The backup on I-5 in Orange County. Now, this all started last night. A woman flagged down police saying her boyfriend tried to strangle her. Police have been working to track down the suspect all morning. You can see it's causing a huge mess in Orange County. Yeah, all lanes have come to a complete standstill. They've been closed for a very long time while this standoff is underway. Of course, we're going to keep you updated as more information comes in this morning. Let's get to our big stories now. Looking ahead to tomorrow, the Washington Board of Health will be meeting tomorrow to talk about Spokane Regional Health member Amelia Clark. Now, earlier this month, an investigation found that she may have violated state law when she fired former health officer Dr. Bob Lutz in 2020. The virtual meeting will take place tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. and it's open to the public. The Washington Board will preview the preliminary investigation findings. They could also take possible action against Amelia Clark. 
The investigation was conducted by law firm Ogden Murphy Wallace. The investigators reviewed public statements, press releases, emails and texts and interviewed several key people. Time for your morning rush. More news in less time. Well, this Friday, Tyler Rambo will be back in court for his sentencing. In March, Rambo was found guilty of assaulting three police officers in 2019 in Coeur d'Alene during the 4th of July shooting. Police returned fire, hitting him 14 times. As a result, Rambo lost both legs. The jury also found him not guilty of attempted murder and assault charges against two other people. Amazon is now facing an antitrust lawsuit filed by the District of Columbia. The D.C. Attorney General accuses Amazon of engaging in anti-competitive behavior. The lawsuit alleges third-party sellers on Amazon.com are restricted from offering their products at lower prices on other websites. Now, the suit only alleges violation of D.C.'s antitrust law. It does not accuse Amazon of violating federal antitrust law. And as summer approaches, Idaho health officials are worried about the trend that shows less people across the state are getting the COVID-19 vaccine. The state health and welfare director says one of the biggest concerns is getting younger Idahoans vaccinated. Right now, the only option for 12 to 15 years old in Idaho is a Pfizer vaccine. However, the director says getting the vaccine into rural areas continues to be the challenge. Well, that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with crime on social media. For the last four weeks, we've made it our goal to highlight Asian American and Pacific Islander culture. You see me and some of my other colleagues on camera, but there are also so many people behind the scenes at Krem that share a common heritage. We don't ever like to insert ourselves into the story, but this one is personal for so many of us here at Krem. So we thought it was important to turn the camera around for a candid conversation about being Asian American. Growing up oh, was quite tough in the 60s. There was a lot of a lot of prejudice going on. And I grew up in a pretty traditional Indian family. They were uh, first generation to come over here from India. So, you know, from birth, I've been pretty immersed in it. Food is like a high priority with my mom. And of course, growing up, we ate a lot of rice. And even now, even though my family may not be big rice eaters, I myself eat rice many, many times a week. And I buy my rice in 50 pound bags. Krem 2 embraces diversity and has for a long time. We have people from all walks of life, including people from the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. I'm Vietnamese and Chinese American, and I want you to meet some of my Asian American colleagues and hear their stories. I am Korean American. I'm Indian. I am Japanese American. I am part Filipino, Hispanic, and Caucasian. I am half Chinese. I am Filipino, Chinese, Spanish, French, Hawaiian. Breaking overnight, a deadly shooting in Atlanta, bringing national attention to the rise of violence against Asian Americans. It is a little bit frightening to know that there has been an increase in attacks on Asian Americans. And I do worry sometimes about some of my older family members. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. You know, professionally, I have to, to do my job, but Emotionally, it breaks my heart that it's almost coming back to the way it was. We're used to covering all types of stories, but this last year became even more personal for us as attacks against Asian Americans increase. While it's making headlines now, it's not necessarily something new. We still couldn't sit with the, the, the white folks at the, at the restaurants, and I thought that was part of life. We had to sit at the counter. And then it realized, I realized that, wow, this is real. My mother dealt with a lot of discrimination when she came to this country in the 1970s. Her English wasn't that great, and so uh, she was looked down upon. I always got the question, what are you? Because I suppose I look a little bit racially ambiguous. That's the term I like to use. What's wrong with your nose? Why is your nose flat? Wh or just, what are you, Chinese? Or just plainly, what are you? And then I look at them and say, what do you mean? <laughs> what am I? Well, Americans all across the country have gathered in rallies to honor the victims and condemn violence against Asian Americans. But it hits harder at home for me because it's my own family. And as a journalist, hearing about those things that are happening, um, it makes me sad. You know, it happens in sports too. You see it and it's, it's very discouraging that, you know, we're in 2021 and we're 
still in these spots a lot of the times um, as it pertains to people of color. I actually remember watching Creme as an aspiring journalist in college and saw people who looked like me and that really encouraged me because I knew that this is a place that no matter what your background is, everyone is welcome. I feel like Creme has made a huge effort to bring uh, people with diverse backgrounds, both behind the scenes and on air. I'm grateful to be in a place that is accepting and seems to celebrate diversity. I've been extremely happy with the diversity and how that's championed here at Creme. As journalists, we know it's our responsibility to uncover truth. This is our community too. We live here and call the Inland Northwest home. We know it won't happen overnight, but we know we can make a difference. I want to shine a light on the positive stories, like I said, you know, bringing a light to people who are making a difference in the AAPI community. Everybody has something to contribute to American culture, which is kind of a mishmash of all the other cultures. Speaking up always when you see something that's hate or, uh, you know, just racial bias to say something and make sure you speak up so you can correct actions moving forward. So Creme employees actually created a diversity and inclusion statement, and we want to share it with you this morning. It says Creme 2 strives to provide a workplace of inclusion and diversity. Our station does not tolerate discrimination. We cultivate a culture of growth as well as share a common goal of inclusion no matter the identity. We take each of our colleagues unique and shared experiences and use them to make our workplace a community one for all. I got to tell you guys, it was emotional covering this story, hearing my own peers, our own peers mm -hmm. tell their stories. You know, just uh, our director this morning is uh, behind the scenes right now. And to hear how he was treated, that was really hard to just hear. But I think that's the powerful thing about sharing these stories mm -hmm. is that we all have a story to tell. And by hearing these stories, we can all work towards being more inclusive to everyone. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine someone hearing one of these stories and thinking, they're still going to continue with this behavior that might yeah. be hurtful towards someone else. Everyone is a real person with real emotions mm -hmm. and real feelings and just don't hurt them. Yeah, Absolutely. this is an opportunity to celebrate and learn and now grow and mm -hmm. Thank you, Tim, for that story. We really, really enjoyed it this yeah. morning. And I also do want to thank all of my fellow CREM employees who were brave enough to share their story with us. Yeah, thank you. All right, still to come this morning on Up With Krem, a professor from Eastern Washington University talks to us about how to combat racism in our daily lives. She shares guidance that you can use if you are a bystander to a racist act. And of course, we're gonna take you back outside, socked in in the mountains, but temperatures on the rise as sun comes back out later today. I'll walk you through it.